Hey everyone, the name is Eric Dorn. In today's video, I'm gonna talk about what you can do if you struggle with a sense of meaninglessness or lack of purpose. You wonder if life has a purpose and what purpose of life really is. And if there is no purpose, then what are you supposed to do? Just give up? Now, I find this an interesting question to answer because for many <laughs> reasons, I struggle with the opposite problem. I don't struggle with a lack of meaning or purpose. I struggle with being overwhelmed by knowing that there is so much to do, so many things that matter, so many things that mean st things to me. I have a limited amount of time. I make this video with a bias. I want to help you feel that life matters because I want your help, your energy, your support in doing and contributing to a better planet and to a more peaceful world and to a more sustainable society. I have a bias in making this video. I'm already smitten by the meaning virus. It's already infiltrated my system and convinced me that things matter. And so <laughs> it, a part of me wants to say, stop watching this video before it's too late. Stop watching it before you also start to care, before you also start to feel like you actually have to do things. Because the truth is, I think it's not necessarily that people have rationally come to determine that life lacks a purpose. It's not that you are more rational than me. It's not that you've learned to see the world more clearly. It's not that you've learned to see that nothing matters. It's that you are stuck in one part of your brain. Because imagine this, imagine your brain has two different opposing impulses. The first impulse is the impulse to do things. The impulse to make a difference, to make the world better, to improve your environment, to clean your room, to fix things that are wrong, to help your friends, to support your community, you know. And the second one, the desire to be comfortable, the desire to just not care, the desire to stop watching the news, the desire to tune out, to be done with everything, to have, to be rid, to no longer have to worry about anything. And approximately half the population are going to struggle with this sense that, you know, uh, I want to be comfortable. I don't want to be stressed. I don't want things to matter. I don't want things to have meaning. I don't want my work to make a difference. I don't want uh, to, yeah, change the world. I just want to be comfortable. I just want to be free from stress, free from worries, free from concerns, and to just be detached. And the other half are gonna be stressed to the max, overworking, compulsive, uh, depressed from like overwork, pushing themselves to their limits, to constantly grow, to constantly stay competitive, to constantly do better, to constantly improve themselves. Now, you might uh, find that, uh, yeah, neither of these are positive options. And uh, I agree, 100%, uh, I agree with you. I think it should be more fair. I think that, you know, the people that care too much should start to learn to care a little bit less and the people that care too little should learn that it's okay to care a little bit more. And so what you want to do is you want to think about what purpose motivation serves in your life. Why do you have motivation? Why do you, how do you get motivation in the first place? Because you might not even know how to get it anymore. Perhaps you knew when you were younger, but at some point, you know, you got so comfortable, you got so stuck in your rut, you got so stuck in your own thoughts and your own worldview and how you saw things that you just didn't know anymore. What is motivation? How do I get it? You know, okay, I see people are motivated around me. I see they are doing things, but I have no idea how I do things. I get a lot of people that comment on my videos saying, you know, I've had ideas to make videos like this as well, but I don't have the energy. And I find that, you know, so the first thing we need to start with is how do you get that motivation in the first place? And to understand this, I want you to think of motivation as a mountain. Yeah, motivation is a mountain. That means it's something you look up at. Motivation is something that should make you feel like, I don't know if I can do that. So if it doesn't feel like that, if it doesn't feel like a difficult, heavy shore, it's not going to be motivating. So that's the first thing you need to know. Like it has to feel difficult. It has to feel like a shore. It has to feel like a drag. When you hear about it, you're gonna want to be like, oh, oh damn, that sounds like a total drag. And that's also echoed in Joseph Campbell's Hero's Myth. 
most of us reject the call for glory, for a quest, for a purpose, because it's a mountain, it's a shore, you know, and we're, we're already stressed, we're already tired, we don't really have any energy anyway, so yeah, like, I'd rather not, maybe later, you know, like, maybe later, maybe another day, you know, you keep putting it forward, you know, so it has to feel like that, you know, that's the only way it's going to be motivating for you, uh, so in that sense, if it has to feel like that, you know, like, why do you even want it in the first place, why do you even want life to matter? Why do you even want things to mean anything? Why do you even want to feel motivated if motivation is such a sure, such a heavy, difficult, stressing thing to do? Well, it's because of kickback, you know, going up the hill, total drag, going down it. That's, that's a water slide. That's the ride of your life. So motivation is that promise of a great reward through great effort. That means you have to put energy into it, but if you put energy into it, you're gonna get to go down that beautiful water slide and you're gonna have that great ride. So uh, motivation has to feel like a shore, but it also has to have a reward. So that means you not only need to know, you know, like uh, that it's gonna be tough, but you also need to know that if you do it, there's gonna be like this great treasure at the end of it. So that's how you know it's motivation. Now, why don't we do that? You know, <laughs> to understand that, you know, you have to think of the opposite, the autopilot. I've been fighting against the autopilot all my life. I've seen it everywhere where I grew up. I saw it around the, in the people's eyes. I saw depression. I saw bitterness. I saw cynicism. I saw people that just didn't care. They were mentally, physically, and emotionally turned off from everything, from everyone, from caring in the first place. So what had happened? Well, they've gone down the autopilot ravine. So if motivation is a mountain, the autopilot is a ravine. It's something you slip into. It's like something you find yourself rolling down. And it's like a promise because it's an easy way of getting relief. It's an easy way of getting rest, of, you know, like, uh, not having to care of uh, just turning off. And it feels really good in the beginning. And then you're down there and it doesn't feel so great anymore. And you're looking up and you're like, what did I do? <laughs> you know, like falling down, it feels great. It's like the water slide, but reverse. Uh, but being down there, it feels like shit. And now you find yourself looking at that mountain anyways, but now it's even higher up because now it's not even on the first floor. It's <laughs> like, uh, first you even have to work yourself back up to the baseline, you know, and bef uh, before you can even start climbing that mountain. 